When it comes down to which builds are the fastest in Path of Exile, the answer will always be builds that are made around the skill which is designed to be fast in the first place. Such skills achieves near instantaneous speeds once you invest a decent amount of currency onto them. One such skill is Flicker Strike. This skill name does a pretty good job at hinting at how fast it can be. The drawback is, well, low damage on average. Well of course unless you go ham on investment as mentioned before. The result would be pure satisfaction as you see the entire map evaporates with the press of a single key. It should also be mentioned that unlike every other skill in Path of Exile, Flicker does not require you to move between attacks. This skill has a built-in mechanic that moves you between hits as long as you can afford its continuous mana and frenzy charge cost every attack. Mana cost can be solved with leech, but the problem will be frenzy charges. But until we get to talk about how we solve that problem, let us begin by talking about our ascendancy of choice. We are a slayer. The main reason behind this choice is raw damage output, but there is also an interesting mechanic that is made possible with this ascendancy in particular. First we go with Hitsman. This node is simply pure damage boost against bosses. We also get 10% more damage while mapping, basically all the time. Next we go for Impact. This node provides us with additional damage based on the proximity between us and our target. And with a skill like Flicker Strike, that bonus will be at its maximum all the time. This node also provides us with lots of accuracy rating. From here we pick up Overwhelm. Most weapons in this game comes with their standard 5% base crit chance with attacks. And with this weapon, you get another flat 3% additional base crit chance, which can result in 30% more damage most of the time. Now last but not least, we take Masterful Form. This node sets your maximum endurance charges to be equal to your maximum frenzy charges, basically doubling the benefits of investing into frenzy charges as long as you have a way to generate endurance charges in the first place. And that was it for our ascendancy of choice. From here we built a tree that prioritizes every single maximum frenzy charge node on the passive tree. We also have lots of crit and sword damage nodes. Then we pick up all life and attack speed nodes along the way. After that, we have one large cluster jewel setup that adds some powerful attack notables like Fuel the Fight, Sure Footed Striker, and Martial Prowess. Now we made it obvious that we need proper investment to make our flicker strike go as fast as possible. That takes form in our first item of the day, Replica Ferals 4. This item is hands down the best flicker strike chest in the entire game. It's essential to sustain flicker strike frenzy charge cost. It also gives us our maximum number of endurance charges all the time. If you are on a budget, then using the regular ferals for is going to serve you just as fine. Just remember that using any of these two chests requires you to have aspect of the cat crafted and activated on at least one of your items. And in our case, that item is our helm. This one has flicker strike enchant. You generally need life on it and as many resistances as possible alongside aspect of the cat. The best way to get something like this is by just getting an enchanted base, chaos spamming it until you get what you want and then crafting aspect of the cat using the beast recipe. Now for our most important item, and that is our weapon, we have void forge. This weapon will provide you with lots of elemental damage based on 3 times your physical damage. And as such, it will be more beneficial to invest into flat physical damage instead of flat elemental damage, because it will be tripled as random elemental damage. Void Forge also deals damage of all three different elements in sequence, which will allow us to abuse support gems like Trinity support later on. Anyway, our next item is Hands of the High Templar Unique Gloves. Try to get one with elemental weakness corruption alongside plus one to maximum frenzy charges. If you manage to get both, then congratulations. Now you have a pair of gloves that are better than any mirror tier rare gloves for this build in particular. For our build, we have Arn's Anguish. This unique build converts every one of your endurance charges into brutal charges. These will give you 3% chance to deal triple damage, each stacking additively. They will greatly boost your damage as long as you have a way to generate endurance charges in the first place. And as we have mentioned before, our chest will gladly handle that for us. Anyway, our next item is an Assassin's Mark Ring with a decent flat physical damage roll. 
From here it's just life and resistances if possible. Best base for this item is steering for getting as much flat physical damage as possible for our void forge. Same thing applies for our second ring. We got life, flat physical damage to attacks and as many resistances as possible. For our amulet we have one with as much crit multi as possible, crit chance, fizz as cold, life and added flat physical damage to attacks. Now since we have both Assassin's Mark and Elemental Weakness Curse in this build, we are obligated to allocate Whispers of Doom on our amulet in order to utilize both of them at the same time. Last but not least we have a pair of boots with Tailwind and Elusive if possible. You can always get Elevated Onslaught for that extra 10% attack and movement speed. From here it's just life and movement speed as always. In my opinion, boots are the real currency sink of any Path of Exile build, mainly because they are the number one item that dictates how fast any build can go. But with that being said, we are basically done with our items. Now let's talk about some gem links. There are two mandatory gem setups in this build. The first one is obviously our main six link. This one contains Flicker Strike, Multi Strike, Inspiration, Close Combat Support, Trinity Support, and Awakened Ancestral Call. You might notice that we are not using melee splash, mainly due to how good Awakened Ancestral Call can be when you have sufficiently high damage. Just make sure to swap it for elemental damage with attacks for bosses. Our next setup is a 4 link aura setup. This one contains Hatred, Herald of Ice, Max Level Precision, and Level 3 Enlighten. The rest of your sockets are left for whatever you see fit. You can have any moving skill setup you want, you can have cast when damage taken setup, or a golem support, it's up to you. But now with gems out of the way, let's talk about some jewels. Each one of your normal rare jewels should try to look like this one. You need to prioritize life first, and then as many crit multi and attack speed modifiers as possible. Feel free to get resistances on your jewels as well, if you are still not capped on them already. Last but not least for our watcher's eye, since we are using Void Forge, we are not allowed to deal any physical damage in this build, and as such our base physical damage is lost unless converted into any elemental damage if possible. As a result, you need to get 40% of physical damage converted to cold while affected by hatred, and maybe increased attack damage while affected by precision, or increased cold damage while affected by hatred. For Bandit's quest, you are going to help Alira obviously for her bonus to elemental resistances and global critical strike multiplier. And that was basically it for this build guide. If you guys have enjoyed this video, then maybe consider leaving a like, and maybe even subscribe so you don't miss out on any future build guides like this one. My name is Phoenix, and I will see you all in the next video.